Guys, here I have a very special car, the all-new 2023 BMW M2. And in this video, you will learn everything you need to know about it because I also have Dirk. Hi, Dirk. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, please introduce yourself first. So my name is Dirk Hecker and I'm the head of engineering for BMW M. Well, so you know everything there is to know about this car. <laughs> most, most of this. Yes. Yeah. So this is the second generation yes. M2. That's right. Uh, and so how about this? How about we start outside, kind of talk about some of the changes, the chassis, and then go inside because you have, well, one engine, but two transmissions available. Yes, we have two transmissions available. So the car is also based on the technique in the chassis and powertrain from the M3 and M4. We thought it was a very good idea to take this package in a shorter wheelbase to get this typical M2 feeling. That means um, pure, very sportive, agile, and so on. So we use also the powertrain, the engine, um, with 460 horsepower in the M2, and it's available in standard with the um, eight-speed Steptronic with some um, drive logic, and as an option with a six-manual um, transmission with an um, shift assistant. Sweet. So uh, this car right here is actually does not have the carbon package. We'll explain that later. Yes. Uh, but it, this is a manual transmission car. Yes. So let's walk around a little bit because uh, when you compare it to the first generation M2, yes. this car is a little bit uh, wider and longer. Is that correct? It's wider and longer than the first generation. And I think you can also see that the same wheels and rims we also used in the M3 and M4. In okay. this day, in the predecessor, we have different um, tire dimensions between M2 and M4. And okay. this is one of the enablers that we get a performance much more closer to the M4 than in the predecessor generation. And then let's talk about the width, right? Because that's important uh, yeah. for handling, right? So the, the width of the car is in the front and in the rear the same as the M4 and M3. Mm -hmm. Only the wheelbase is shortened. The wheelbase is shortened by 110 millimeters. So the car is more agile, more dynamic than in comparison to the M3 and M4. On, on the other side, with for the first time, um, the electronically controlled shock absorbers, much more performing than the predecessor, which started with um, conventional shock absorbers. Sweet. Okay, and the rear is um, approximately the same as it's before the same. on the M2? It, it's, it's a little bit more. It's yeah. a little bit more. The, the whole car um, increased a little bit the size and dimensions. I think it's more an adult version and it's more um, very close to the M3 and M4. All right, well, let's, I'll open the hood so we can look at yes. the engine, okay? Yes, fine. So this is a three liter straight six. Yes, that's right. Um, the S58, is that correct? The internal code is S58, that's right. Uh -huh. We're good informed. So this engine already has a lot of fans. Yeah, I hope so, <laughs> I think so. Me right. too. <laughs> so, so tell me a little bit about the engine um, for, for those who may not understand what it is, the S58. So the S58 is a three liter six inline engine. Um, with a um, double turbocharge, um, we call it M twin turbo power, power turbo, sorry for that. Yeah. Um, we use it, um, we started with that engine in the X3 and X4M, then we go to the M3 and M4 and we have the possibility to use it in different um, setups for the power. Here we have 460 horsepower and 550 newton meters, a little less in comparison to the M3 and M4 but I think a very good um, base for the M2 performance um, with the car. And you have the possibility to um, combine this with different gearboxes. As I have said, yeah. um, one is a Steptronic 8-speed eight, eight or the manual 6-speed gearbox. That's very cool. So this engine, I mean, has, you know, various kind of flexibility, right? Yes, you can have right. more power, more torque. Yes. Um, I think it rev redline is about 7,200 RPM. About that, yes. It's yeah. a high ref characteristic that's very important for us because it's, um, it's, a, it's a price and also a statement for dynamic and also for emotion with a combustion engine. So, so you can hear it and you can rev yeah. that engine yeah. really high. You can hear every ref. <laughs> Everyone. All right, that's really sweet. So also for United States specifications, 
Uh, I think the power numbers are a sli a sl slightly bit different because they're measured differently, right? Yeah, they're measured differently. So 453 horsepower for US spec yeah. and about 406 pound-feet of torque. And the torque is around 2650 RPM. So this is quite a torquey one. Yes. So let's jump inside. Yes. And um, learn more about all the different modes, characteristics. And let's start the engine. All right, so I'm going to start the engine so we can also get a little bit of air conditioning. Yes. <laughs> and we're here uh, near Scottsdale, Arizona. This is an um, international press drive. So you're here, your team is here. Yes. And uh, we're enjoying and learning a lot about these cars. So, um, First off, okay, so the seats, these are kind of the standard seats, right? That's the M Sport seat, that's yep. right. You have also the possibility to take as a highlight the M Carbon bucket seats as a part of the carbon package. So, so this one has uh, the sunroof? Yes, this is with a sunroof, but also a carbon roof is available with a weight reduction by a six kilogram. So if you get the carbon package, I believe it's about $9,900 approximately about that. Um, in the United States. And um, so you get the carbon roof that I can show later. Yes. Um, so that's, you said, that's about six kilograms. That's about 13 pounds off. And then the carbon seats are another savings. Yes, it's about 12 kilograms. And it's kilograms. a different style. It's a different style. Yeah. And it's a more, more fixation for lateral um, dynamics and, and going more on track or country roads but also with a very good um, long distance comfort. It's the same, nearly the same um, configuration you can also um, get in the M3 and M4. Okay, so you can see here, six speed manual. I think, thank you for keeping this, by the yeah. way. <laughs> thank you, because-, because Also this my is, favorite. This is fun. Uh, you're getting one of these cars, right? Yes, I will get one in uh, three weeks from now on with a carbon package, but also um, with a six speed manual. With a manual. So, the uh, one of the things I want to learn about, like, what's the best way to launch the car? Because a lot of people ask this, right? <laughs> because you have different characteristics between the eight-speed automatic, yes. of course, and um, and of course the manual. Uh, so let's start maybe with the modes. How about that? With the modes are um, that's a different um, possibilities views on the the panel. So you can choose between road, sport, and track. Mm -hmm. We default in road, and we go to sport. If we change to the right side, then we have a reduced focused um, instrumentation um, for, for driving, dynamic driving, also with a reduction of the driving assistant function. So this we recommend to go if you want to feel and to get the emotions on country roads or something like that, because you only have the um, needed information and anything else. Okay. And so the track mode track, is the yeah. next one. It's much more and only um, um, recommended for, for going use. on track yeah. because we switch off um, also um, the CID, the display, the center so that's display. Off. That's okay. off. And it's similar, but I think a reduced um, information with the tire pressures, with temperature, oil and water um, to get the right information for um, the driving the car on racetracks. I love that you have the gear selector, like neutral yes. or first gear, yes. um, second. And that's the prominent not one because yes. it's that's in the what middle. you're doing. It's the middle of the focus. <laughs> that's what you're doing, right? Yes. You're driving that's the car. Right. That's right. Um, so let's go back to the screen because I want to talk about all the different configurations, these yeah. ones, right? So that's let's start with the engine. With the engine. So we have the possibility to change between three different characteristics. We start default in efficient. And we have the possibility for Sport and Sport Plus, and that means that's the characteristic of the throttle control. On one side and on the other side, combined with that also a different sound with the car. So beginning with Efficient, coming over Sport to Sport Plus, the car gets more and more um, um, dynamic emotional sound also. Can, can you try that? Maybe we'll hear the difference. Uh, let's so so we, we, can, we can do it um, during idling. I think perhaps you will hear it. Um, so let's just, you could touch the screen too, right? Fat. I can kind of hear a deeper sound. Yes, and from Sport to Sport Plus. 
the once next, again next, more, more more deep yes and i think um, if you push the pedal a little bit you hear inefficient it's more silent comfortable uh -huh. in sport it's the first step of more sportiness and with sport plus it's the last step also with a backfire sound, something like that. Uh, when you're shifting gears and when you're, when you're shifting yeah. gears. And I think this is a very good um, point because for gear shifting, especially for downshifting, we have also a function of the gear shift assistant. That means this is a ref matching for downshifting. Mm -hmm. If it's on, it will help you. If you are a purist and an expert, you can go on also off and you have to handle it by yourself with um, two foot driving or something like that. Yeah, uh, heel toe driving. It almost, works quite, almost. quite well and there is nearly no chance to do it better, but the chance is to do it for yourself, to, but, to test and to, to, to... Yes, of course, there are old fashioned people who yes. like, like no, it. It's right? not old fashioned, it's, uh, <laughs> I think it's a puristic one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about chassis, right? Chassis? That's, that's really important. It's important because for the first time we have in the standard also the electronically um, controlled um, shock absorbers. So you have the possibility um, to change between di uh, three different modes, between Comfort Sport and Sport Plus. And that is the uh, damping forces in um, compression, but also rebound. We modulate to get a stiffer body of the car, to get a stiffer um, um, wheel control. And it depends um, on the track what you want to need uh, what you want to drive when we do the setup the comfort is for everyday driving on public roads the sport to give you an impression it's our focus for the Nürburgring Nordschleife mm -hmm. because you have um, a lot of um, corners and 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 and, and elevation arms, changes ele elevation changes yeah. and the sport plus is a very stiff one is short one and this is a recommendation for a track for an even track like a smooth like a smooth one yes interesting so right now we're in Arizona in the mountains and there's a lot of, you know, uneven yeah. because up and down. So it's similar to Nordschleife, would you say? Or <laughs> yeah, but on a Nordschleife we go a little faster. <laughs> yes, I, can, I cannot go faster here because yeah. it's a speed limit, right? Yes, okay. but it's, 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 not, um, it's not only one truth for, for, for the condition. It also depends, like also the other um, um, settings, more also to the philosophy and the favorite of the driver. So we want to offer different possibilities to configure the car to make it individual and the next point is also to go um, with the steering with different ca characteristics so some people like more lighter steering effort some li uh, like it more um, stiffer so it's up to you um, to change between comfort and sport and nearly the same also for the brake so there is no one solution for all the time but there is a possibility uh, depending on your favorite on the tracks on the road um, to configure um, the setup whatever you want and you can also fix it for example if you push now longer the m2 button you get the sign the feedback and now this configuration we see here with the red uh, marks is configured under the m2 button okay so you can uh, uh, access it very quickly yes yes okay so and um and then the shock absorbers, are they also reacting to the current condition? I mean, uh, yes, both, both. They're, they're active. Yes. They, they, are, they are reacting on the, on the um, surfaces, but also on the driver input. So it's both from both sides. Okay. So now we go to M traction control. And this is, I'm just learning about this. This okay. is very special. So this is a special function. T tell me about this. Um, we, we offer that if you go with DSC off. So you see here a little light gray mm -hmm. color. That means it's not activate in this moment, but we have to push DSC off. Okay. By this oh, way. Uh, before you go, um, what can you go back? Yes, let's, no let's problem. Go back. Uh, can you explain also the MDM? Yes. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, on this screen. Yes. So. DSC on, MDM and DSC off. Can you explain that first? Yes. DSC on is a full support of the system. So um, we have um, a neutral and st stabilized car overall. So I, I recommend to do that if you go everyday driving mm -hmm. on public roads. The MDM is a little bit more open. It allows a little um, side slip angle. And it do um, a little attraction, um, more slip on the wheels. For example, if you go um, on snow or ice condition and you want to have a little fun, you can go with the MDM. 
but this is pre-configured and it's, this function is also known since generations of um, BMW M. Yeah. For the first time with DSC off, that means without any interaction of the system, we offer now the M traction control possibility. That's also available in the M3 and M4 and that means you have the possibility to change between 10 steps a different support by the M traction control system. 10 steps. 10 steps. 10 steps, yeah. And step zero is complete DSC off. Okay. And ten, um, step 10 is um, the biggest support in slip, but also in yawing of the car. And there is no recommendation to do it on, for example, in, in rainy condition or snow condition only in one mode. It offers the driver the possibility depending on his driving style, on his favorite, to uh, make a setup with more or less sliding and traction. And we use that also in the M4 CSL in a different um, um, software um, uh, calibration mm -hmm. because we have different tires and also, for example, in the M4 GT4. So you can also use that not only as a support for the driver, you can use that also for the tire management to can go longer, can go longer um, with, with on the track well performing yeah. tires because you don't override the tires. But it's up to you um, to, to choose your favorite. So there is not one solution. There is a possibility for the experts and who want to, 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 to play also with the system, to understand the system, to adjust in, in every situation track. The, the right um, setup. So you can really fine tune it to, Very to, fine -tune to, to, yes. to your liking. But now, um, can you explain what enables this, right? Because you have kind of your own BMW M technology using the engine. Can you explain this a little bit? How you determine the traction level? Yes, we, we do it um, in, 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 it depends on the slip between front and rear axle. And this is one to, con to, to calculate the slip. And the next point is then to manage the engine and the brakes for that. And we have changed to a very, we call it um, in, in German, actuator nahe. So that means um, very near to the actuator of the engine. Okay. So in these days, the slip control system is not regulated by DSC. It's regulated by the en uh, power control unit of the engine. So with this that, is this system. Yeah. This system. Yeah. With that, you can reduce the delay between um, the slip um, calculation and the interaction by about 200 milliseconds. So you are much more precise and faster in the slip control because we do it um, by the um, engine control unit and not by the um, DSC control unit. But it works complete together and we want to use that um, to get a better performance. And if you compare this um, with DSC systems from the predecessor or from elder generations, I think in these days, um, without a system, you are, will be uh, slower because you can't handle it in a similar way like the system does. Because it does it so precisely. Very and, precise, and so, very fast. Uh, so you made it fast. faster reacting. Yes. Faster yes. reacting. Yes, that's right. Um, it, it's kind of hard to understand, uh, but but I think. I think we get the point, right? Because you're kind of removing some delay between different systems. Yes. You change some of the architecture, right? Yes, yes. Of the system as well. And this is your proprietary technology. Yes, yes, this is, right. this this, is yours. That's ours. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's really special. So, of course, maybe I'm not such a good driver to learn or be able to tell the difference between, you know, three and four or three and two or, you know what I'm saying? But, but there are people out there who want this okay. and need this, right? Okay. Would you agree? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah. I think so. So I do also a lot of um, winter trainings in Sweden, in Lapland. Uh -huh. So and we do some courses, handling courses, and snow and ice. And we have a lot of participants. They want, oh, we want to go off. We want to go off because we are faster. Uh -huh. And I take, uh, I go in front of the group, and I take the system. And it depends a little bit on the condition. Yeah. If you take three or four, then you are faster than the other guys because they slide too much. And, and the system kind of catches up. And the sign will catch up in this configuration three and four, for example, and that means you are also faster because the car um, um, don't um, decelerate by side slip, so it's more um, traction orientated 
um, on the on the track. But that's you have to to test for yourself and and your um, driving conditions. Yeah, so like a safe area would be maybe a frozen lake or, for example, or, or something like this. Or winter road. Uh, winter road, yeah. uh, that's a kind of private area, so yes. you can kind of exper yeah. experience the system and learn, learn about the system. I would recommend to start with DEC on, then to take a look on the different to MDM. And if you understand what is the, the, the fundamental possibility with, to, to play with a slip, with a setup, then you can go to the M traction control um, choose um, your favorite for the different um, road or um, driving conditions. Okay, so my original question, because I think everybody wants to know, how do I launch this in the best way possible with a manual transmission? So should I kind of keep the engine in Sport Plus, chassis, stiffer, steering? What would you recommend for kind of the best condition? Uh, I, for, I think it depends also a little bit on the driver um, well, characteristic and favorites. So if you go with a manual, it's up to you to get the best um, acceleration. Um, for me, I, I wouldn't go with Sport Plus. I would go more with Sport because my favorite is a very good controllability, not to be too aggressive. This is one point. Because you could find slip, right? Yes, you need slip for the maximum acceleration. That means not full spinning wheels, yes. but a little spinning. And I would, depending on the road surface, start with an and traction control with perhaps on this condition two or three because and we have little pebbles yes so this this particular parking lot has it's been raining right so it's got some sand and it's kind of slippery you yes. know, it's not ideal and then you have to to manage um, the, the engine the, power the, the and clutch, the clutch yeah. and i think um, so what like what rpm would you think i think nearly to the maximum torque and you have um, comment <laughs> 2,600. A little bit more, yeah, about 3,000. Yeah. And then um, test Let's go it. of the clutch. Yeah. And um, that's. And, and what's the procedure for the automatic? The automatic. Is there a launch, mo launch mode there? There's a launch mode. So that means um, you go with DSC off. Um, you take the drive logic 3. Um, you go um, with the left. The, the function will also shown in the car. Mm -hmm. You will uh, stop with the left foot on the brake. You will increase the pedal to a, um, a modulated um, ref on the on the right side. It's not the maximum one. And then you re release the brake pedal immediately and the car will um, start um, from the from the standstill. Yeah, so in the, um, I was reading the press release for the United States and there is about two tenths of a second difference and the automatic car is quicker to 60 yeah, right. according to the data, yes. right? Um, and it's just because the driver is bad. <laughs> It's, why is that? Is that because the transmission can shift a little bit quicker? Um, Perhaps it, it could a little bit quicker than um, with a, um, as a driver. Yeah. And don't forget, with a six-speed, you have different ratios than the eight-speed. So with the eight-speed, you have the possibility um, to start a little bit shorter. And with the gear, yeah. Yes, with yeah. the gear. So we have, we have a different um, um, possibility with the gearbox. So I, th I think it's 3.9 seconds to 60 in the autom automatic transmission car and about 4.1 yes, right. with the, with this manual. Yes. But I think you and I agree the enjoyment kind of in involvement of the driving, I think the manual probably with my choice. It's my choice. That's also my choice for my private car, for a private car. If I go on a racetrack, if I go on the Nürburgring or if you go racing with a GT4, um, the recommendation is um, to go with an m Tronic. And we use the same gearbox, the uh, eight-speed um, M-Step Tronic, also in the GT4, because it makes uh, to race and to perform much easier than the manual one. But I completely agree on country roads or something like that to go in the Alps. That's a typical fascinating um, route in the in, in, in the southern part of Europe. Um, I would like to have the manual one yeah, and also um, the ref management and so on <laughs> to hear the car, to feel the car. Um, I'm quite happy that we can offer this also in this in the second generation of the M2. And also, um, just to continue a little bit more on the technical details, the there's a sport differential as yes, well, Yes, active right? M differential. So can you explain that a little bit? Um, so it, tr it transfers power side to side. Yes, it, it's co it could be complete open if you go straight ahead. And we have the possibility with an electric actuator to do a diff lock with 100%. So it depends also on the road condition, on the driver input, on cornering or going straight ahead. 
to, to make the diff lock um, stiffer or more open. And that's a complete range between 0% up to 100%. So like if, if you're launching the car, like we were talking about, you know, it's probably going to be locked, right? So both tires are gripping. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I'm not sure because if you go straight ahead, um, perhaps it's sometimes a good idea not to, uh, to, to, to let a little bit um, difference between left and right. Okay. It, it, depends depends. Then, it depends then on the reaction of the car. So if the car sees straight ahead, there is a, diff, a difference between left and right. For example, if you accelerate on mu split or something like that, that will lock immediately. Mm -hmm. Um, default mask, we have a little um, pre-tension um, on the car, but um, for, for going straight ahead for acceleration, we want to to um, to fix it complete from the beginning. And then, if you're in you know one of the more dynamic modes, um, if you're doing corners, would it send a little bit more power um, to the outside uh, wheel? Or? Yes. 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 So it's kind of uh, it, it's, dynamic. It, it's also a part um, of the activation for the M traction control system. So that's it's the interaction of the engine control, but um, in combination with the active M differential. So mm -hmm. we use both um, to to manage um, slip, uh, also um, acceleration longitudinal, but also lateral. Uh, I, I'm learning a lot. Thank you very much. So can you, before we stop, can you do me one more favor? Um, I want to go outside and I want to put my microphone on the exhaust. Yes. Can you can you give me yeah. some revs yes. in efficient sport and sport plus? Okay. Just I want to yes. I want to see the difference. Thank you. I'll be behind. Okay. So this is a this is efficient, correct? We start with efficient. That's right. Okay. Change to sport? Yeah. Good, good. And sport plus. Next step. That's great. I like it. I have to stop? <laughs> yes. Oh, you don't want to stop? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, great. Uh, really, thank you uh, for your time, because I know I, I took a lot of your time. Thank you. Uh, but I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you. I learned a lot, and uh, this car is on sale now. Yes. So you can go check it out. Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.